Hey, you guys, gals, and bums, welcome back to a few bad men. The boss was under the weather a little bit last few weeks. And I kind of lost my voice, so I couldn't make any videos or any, any episodes. But I'm back with part two of the Castellan Marese War. Okay, today I'm going to be covering the combatants, the people who fought in the war over the underworld in this country. Now, when we think of the Castellan Marese War, we tend to focus on New York City, but actually, the conflict involved Italian gangs across the country. Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Philadelphia. It was really mostly Sicilian gangs against mostly Neapolitan gangs. So here we go. The Castellan Marese War, part two, the combatants. When Benito Mussolini and his fascist party became the leaders of Italy in the early 1920s, he went to give a speech in Sicily. The local mafia boss made sure that the only people to show would be the old and the crippled. Everyone else was told to stay away. This infuriated Mussolini and he vowed to destroy the mafia in Sicily. Many mafioso made their way to the US. They joined with the established gangsters from Sicily and took part in the cash bonanza that was prohibition. One of these men was Salvatore Maranzano. Maranzano was born July 31st 1886 in Castel del Golfo, Sicily, the youngest of 12, five of which grew to adulthood. As a youth, he had aspirations of joining the priesthood. He even studied at a monastery, but eventually chose a life of crime. He immigrated to the U.S. in 1925 and settled in the Williamsburg section of Brooklyn. He was a charismatic person, and he soon made a place for himself in the New York underworld as a bootlegger, pimp, smuggler of narcotics and people, illegal immigrants, all under the guise of a real estate broker. Another person of importance in the conflicts to come was Stefano Magadino, born October 10th, 1891 in Castellamar del Golfo, Sicily. He led a gang that included Giuseppe Bonanno, the uncle of Joe Bonanno. After a feud between the Magadinos and Bonanno factions against the reigning boss of Castellamar del Golfo, Felice Bucciolato, which left Giuseppe Bonanno and his brother Stefano dead. Magadino left for New York. Arriving in 1902, he quickly rose in the ranks of the clan. He led a group of contract killers known as the Good Killers. And after an acquittal for murder, he left New York City and relocated in Buffalo. When his boss, Joseph DiCarlo, died, Stefano took over as the boss of the Buffalo area, just in time for prohibition. Magadino made millions running liquor from Canada. His organization would be known as the Magadino or Buffalo Crime Family. Giuseppe Carlo Bonanno, or Joe Bonanno, was born January 18, 1905 in Castellamare del Golfo, Sicily. When he was three, his family moved to the US. The family stayed for 10 years before moving back to Sicily. Joe became a mafioso, joining the family clan in Castellamar del Golfo. When Mussolini began his purge of the Sicilian Mafia, Joe slipped back into the U.S. illegally. He quickly joined the throngs of gangsters in the sale of illegal booze and set up a still in Brooklyn. Maranzano took him under his wing and he became his second in command. His organization would go on to be known as the Bonanno family. Salvatore Zabella was born July 7th 1891 in Castellamar del Golfo, Sicily. As a youth, he was a butcher's apprentice until he was convicted of killing his abusive boss. He served three years and upon his release, he moved to the US and settled in Brooklyn where he became part of Toto D'Aquila's gang. He was sent to Philadelphia to run the rackets for Toto. He became the first boss of Philadelphia. He was deported in 1927 after being acquitted for vehicular homicide. But when the war between Joe the Boss and the Castellan Marese broke out, he returned to the States illegally, probably with the help of Salvatore Maranzano. He put together a team of nine killers, including a diminutive but deadly teenager named Harry Riccobini, and they hit the so-called mattresses in Brooklyn. His organization would be known as the Bruno slash Scarfo family, or Philly mob. Giuseppe Aiello, or Joe Aiello, was born September 27th, in Bagaria, Sicily. He moved to the US at the age of 17 and eventually made his way to Chicago where he set up a cheese import company along with Antonio Lombardo. 
when Prohibition hit, him and his brother became rich by selling sugar and homemade liquor to the Jenner brothers. He got into a beef with Al Capone over who should be head of the Union, Sicilian. Aiello thought it should be him, but Capone backed his partner Lombardo. So Aiello went to war with the Capones. He first sought help from Joe Masseria. Masseria agreed to help him in exchange for the east side of Chicago. Aiello became enraged and threatened to kill Masseria. Masseria then let it be known that he supported Capone in this dispute. Aiello decided to throw his money behind Maranzano and provided $5,000 a week to the war chest. Gaetano Reina was also born September 27th in 1889, one year before Aiello in Corleone, Sicily. In his early teens, the Rianas moved to the U.S. and settled in East Harlem on 107th Street. Gaetano quickly fell in with the Morello gang. After the Morello leadership either went to jail or to the cemetery, Rayanna split off to form his own gang based in Harlem and the Bronx, while Toto D'Aquila took parts of Brooklyn and Joe Masseria secured the rest of Manhattan. Rihanna became rich by monopolizing the ice trade. In the time before refrigeration, there was a lot of money to be made in ice. Joe the boss began to put the squeeze on Rihanna, demanding more tribute. Rihanna secretly switched his allegiance to Maranzano. Tommy Gagliano was born Gaetano Gagliano, February 16, 1893, in Corleone, Sicily. As a teen, he migrated to the U.S. He joined the Rihanna organization and along with Tommy Lucchese became the muscle behind Rihanna, eventually becoming his underboss. His organization would go on to be known as the Lucchese family. Joseph Valachi. Nah, I don't usually talk about rats on this channel. But this guy is the reason why we know so much about the inner workings of the Cosa Nostra. And he was present during the war and participated in some of the murders. And as I'm going to discuss next episode, he may have been more important in the war than he let on. All right. Giuseppe Pereno, known as the Clutching Hand from Brooklyn. Not to be confused with Giuseppe Morello, also known as the Clutching Hand from Harlem. It seems that like Morello, he had some type of deformity that left his hand twisted and gnarled. After the death of Frankie Yale, he inherited the Bay Ridge Brooklyn waterfront rackets. His son would later become a member of the Profaci family. Although Joe Bonanno says that Profaci remained neutral in the conflict, Joe Valachi says otherwise. Vito Bonaventure, known as the King, was born January 1st, 1875 in Castellamar del Golfo, Sicily. While in Sicily, he aligned himself with Stefano Magadino and the Bananos in their war against Felice Bucciolato. He came to the U.S. and was part of the Good Killers along with Stefano Magadino. He became a major bootlegger in Brooklyn and major player in the Castellamorese clan. Now these are the men who fought on the side of the Castellamorese. Well, at least the big names. All right, Joe Valachi said there was about three to 400 men on the Maranzano side. The Masseria forces had about 500 men. And Joe the boss, as we talked about in the last episode, I'll be doing a full episode on Joe and the rest of the people involved. But today I'm just giving an overview of the people involved, all right, in the, in, the, in the conflict. Like we spoke about how Joe had Charlie Lucky and his organization, which included Vito Genovese and, uh, uh, and Joe Adonis, which also would have included the Bug and Maya gang, who also played a part in this war. So now I'm going to break down some of the other guys on the Masseria side of this conflict. All right. Ciro Terranova was born July 20th, 1888 in Corleone, Sicily. He was stepbrother to Giuseppe Morello, the first boss of the Italian underworld in New York. He was known as the Artichoke King because of his monopoly on the import of the vegetable, which was a staple in Italian cooking. He controlled parts of Harlem and the Bronx. Giuseppe Morello, born May 2nd, 1867 in Corleone, Sicily. He made his way to the U.S. after being suspected of murder in Sicily. He formed the 107th Street Gang based in Harlem along with his stepbrothers Nick, Ciro, and Vincent Terranova. He grew to control all illegal activities in the Italian neighborhoods in Harlem and the Bronx, parts of Brooklyn, and through his brother-in-law, Lupo the Wolf, Manhattan's Little Italy. He was the first boss of bosses. 
His reign came to an end when he was convicted of running a counterfeiting ring. When he was released from jail, he became Joe Masseria's underboss and consigliere. Al Maneo, or Manfredi Maneo, was born 1880 in Palermo, Sicily. His family moved to the U.S. and they settled in Brooklyn. By the 19-teens, he was underboss to Toto Taquila, running his Brooklyn faction. By 1928, he saw that the big power in New York was going to be Joe the boss, so he betrayed his boss Taquila and pledged his allegiance to Masseria. Steve Ferrigno was born May 12, 1900 in Sicily. He started his criminal career as a member of the Navy Street Gang, a Camorra-based gang in Brooklyn run by Pellegrino Moreno. Now let's, let's clear one little thing up. In the early parts of the century, it wasn't just the mafia. All right, the mafia is a blanket term used to describe all Italian criminals, but the mafia is Sicilian, is a Sicilian invention. And uh, not all Italian criminals came from Sicily. So those who came from Naples or mainland Italy formed the Camorra. All right. So we're going to get into all that. I'm going to do a whole episode on the Mafia Camorra War later on. All right. So Ferrigno eventually fell in with the Total D'Aquila organization. And by 1928, he was the top lieutenant of Al Maneo. Al Capone. I don't think we need to say much about this guy. But by 1928... Capone was the boss of Chicago, and being a non-Sicilian, he was at odds with the Sicilian Mafia in Chicago over who would be in charge of the Union Sicilian. This put him on the opposite side of Joe Aiello and Salvatore Maranzano. Joda Baker Catania, or Catania. Joda Baker was born in Palermo, Sicily in 1901. He was the nephew to Ciro Terranova, the artichoke king. He rose to become a prominent gangster in Harlem and the Bronx. He was a baker by profession, but he made some of his money by hijacking liquor shipments. When he hijacked some of Salvatore Maranzano's booze, he made a mortal enemy. All right, now these are the combatants in the Castellan Marese War. So it's pretty much what you would, what would become the Genovese and the Gambino families in the Chicago outfit, you know, Joe the Boss, Al Maneo, and Al Capone against what will become the Bonanno, Lucchese, Magadino, Profaci, and the Bruno Scarfo mob, or the Philly mob. All right, as I see it, two murders set this whole war off. All right, the, to the death of Toto D'Aquila at the hands of Al Maneo, and the death of Frankie Yale. That's what really set everything off. That's what left the power vacuum for Joe the Boss to try to push in and, and take over the whole New York. But it will be the murder of Giuseppe Moreno, that would unify the Castello Marese behind Salvatore and Maranzano. All right. So next episode, we're going to get into the action, the actual war. I wanted to lay out everything and give you guys the skinny before we did that. So you know who's fighting who. All right. So, hey, make sure you bump off that subscribe button. Break that thumb. Ring that bell so you don't miss anything. All right. You want to help the channel out a little bit? Slide a little envelope upstairs to the boss. The link is down below. The YouTube algorithms got me in the hole after my strike, so they're not really working with me. And you know, channels a little, you know. So if you guys want to help the video get out a little faster, slide a little envelope upstairs to the boss. It'll help the channel out a lot. All right. So stay tuned to the next episode. It's gonna be all action. All right. This is a few bad men. Keep your nose clean and don't take any wooden nickels. I see you in the funnies.